Shalom everyone, shalom I want to welcome everyone to the house of the lost sheep of Israel And today we're going to be going through an annotation of um, what I actually uh, taught on this past Sabbath day And and um, we're doing this for a couple of reasons One, I was setting this up for another type of teaching But um, we had um, Elder Phil that called me and he had some other business he had to take care of So he had to switch that out. So the main thing is he's, he's in good health. All that is good. But he just needed to switch some things out, take care of some business. And and today we're also going to be going back in the back in Zoom. And I'm going to make an announcement now. And I'll make also another announcement after this is done. That I want people who normally come in Zoom, come in Zoom. But if you never attended a zoom meeting i'm asking you for this meeting we not we don't we're not looking for newcomers to come into the zoom meeting so i'm gonna, I'm gonna say the same thing again later again you know because what we're doing is it's something that's extremely important it's something that um each and every person who normally be in zoom meeting that they will want to hear the information that's going to be given out once we come in the back but we don't, I'm not looking for people who just passing by or just visiting over to come back there. It's not this just want to get the gossip. It, it, we, we, don't, we don't do those things here. So once we do this annotation of what's going on, then we're going to go into the Zoom meeting and we're going to take care of a few things there. I shouldn't, shouldn't be back there too long, but if you have questions later about different things, we will do that also. And I do want to do show you, um, based on what was going on, even this past week. Now, we had that one gentleman. He is the name of Jaheed. And I made two mistakes. I even told my deacons, I made two mistakes. The two mistakes I made is I shouldn't have never revealed how I understood what they was doing. And that was mistake one. Because this, what I'm showing you here, he actually posted in there. Some people seen it, some people didn't see it. But it's actually he actually removed it. And I just want to show it to you the way everybody can see it. But it says, English translation is not adequate to explain the Quran. And, and it says what Allah is saying. Therefore, ye, if you cannot read the Arabic in the Quran, preferably the Arabic, the pure language of Quran. And I responded to him. You know, he, was, he put it in there quickly. I responded to him quickly. I said, interesting. It says, you're saying Allah cannot express himself in another language. The creator of heaven and earth, with a question mark. And this is the part I shouldn't have did. I shouldn't have did that because it was exposing what I actually did. So I said, I told him right where it was located. And I wrote that in Arabic. And I said, can you translate this to English for us? Mind you, I know what this is saying in Arabic. Because what, what people do, and what some people do, they'll take um, translations. And what they'll do, they'll take words, and then they'll go take it in these um, translated um, programs, and they'll translate it. And people don't know those translated programs doesn't work at the level people think they do. And that is part of the problem also within today because they'll put it in there and then it'll come back translated incorrectly. So you have a 50-50 shot when you put it in those translators. 
that's technically what's going on. And right here, he, he removed this. So I didn't remove it, he removed it. Because you can see he wasn't saying nothing disrespectful as myself, but he removed it. Because he caught what I did. And that's where this here is kind of small, but it's telling you again, because he, cause he, he put in another quote in there. And I actually, when this was his first one where he was sitting there talking about where he, I'm quoting, he's talking about, you know, an interpretation. But the main thing we want to make sure we understood is what he was talking about. And as I told him, exactly the point. It says the King James Bible is an interpretation, which is not. So I was really trying to make him understand, really, people will say the King James Bible is an interpretation. There's people will say the Quran is an interpretation. And I'm just telling I'm just agreeing with it. But then again, I I screwed up and I put, can you tell me what is this? Tell me is this in your Arabic Quran? And I shouldn't have did that. The reason why I'm saying on both of those, why I shouldn't have did it is because he wouldn't have never know. Cause after that, he stopped talking to me. He, he, he wouldn't say anything else to me after that point. And that was my mistake. The reason why, because I wanted to build a dialogue with him to where I can show him exactly where I was coming from and show him exactly, I, I know what I'm talking about with him and, and where I pulled the information from. And this is the point because, you know, he, he pretty much figured out, I read in which I tell people I read and write Hebrew and Greek. It's well known. You see me do it. I even do it in some writings where I write to people. I will do it. But most people don't know I do read other languages and fully understand it. And Arabic is one of them. I just don't tell people. But I'm letting people know now because they caught me. But what they caught me, but the thing is, is still I want to have an open dialogue with them. That's the point. I want, I want an open dialogue with them. And, it, you know, they can talk to me in any language. They can talk to me in the English language. I'm fine, fine either way. The thing is, is what I'm trying to get them to see is that it's not much different between us and them, but it's a, it's a misunderstanding, but it's in one of the books. It's a misunderstanding in one of the books. It's either going to be in the Quran or it's going to be in the King James Bible, but let's find out where it is, which I found some inconsistencies in their book. And I just want them to say if they have some inconsistencies in the King James Bible, show it to me and I can actually show you if it's some correction or do you or did you find something that is incorrect? That's all I want to really want to do to come to that agreement. But then also to let them know they are they are um, Ishmael children and you can't deny them. And it tells you also right up front. They just didn't know the name. These things we can't argue. But I still want people to clearly understand where I stand all the time. Because in, in the book, it speaks quite a bit about Christians. And Christians will sit there, Christians will join to anything that they believe is close to what they say. Because if you say you're a follower of Christ and you get with a Christian, a Christian will say they're a follower of Christ also. But you have to pay attention to what they're saying and you'll find out they just a Christian. And I like to make myself perfectly clear. I don't support anything or believe anything a Christian says or come out of their mouth when it comes to the Bible. I don't hold to their doctrines. I don't believe in none of their preachers. I don't hold to none of their beliefs. Anything. And I like to make myself perfectly clear that if you want to find out why I stand where I stand, I'm open. You can go through all my all my teachings, you'll see why I stand the way I stand. But I do want people to understand that here, I don't push no Christian type of doctrine. Christian is why we have 45,000 plus different denominations, one, and two, why people are so lost. And they use these things where they call it... Um, apologetics and they, they have all kinds of stuff. So never think that I will ever sit there and support something like that. And 
people have to understand again where your people said where they have break off and now you have camps. But camps have the same belief system as Christians. It's some stuff that they don't believe, but it's a ton of stuff that they do believe that they have the same understanding, the same belief system. It's nothing Christian says I'm going to agree with. They can read scripture and they say, do you agree with the scriptures? Yeah, I agree with the scriptures, but what you're going to do to interpret it, I'm not going to believe. I agree with any scripture that is in the Bible. And I'm talking about the King James Bible with the Apocrypha. Not, not in the ESV, not in the NIV, not in none of those. In the King James Bible, or if you're reading it out of the Hebrew Bible, I, I can roll with you on both. But don't ever think that you're going to sit there and say something and say, do I believe it? I believe it based on what it said there and what I know what it's saying, not based on how you're going to try to interpret it back to me on what you believe. So the same thing with that, we're going to get ready. And as I said, we right after this, we're going to go over to um, Zoom. We have a meeting, and it's mainly for the people who normally come in Zoom meetings because we have a very important message that we want to make sure people get a hold to. But then also we have an annotated part here, which I couldn't finish, and but we're going to still show it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get ready. I'm, this is already queued up to where it can go to where you can see it, but I want people to see what's going on here. And then we can even get back and we can have a conversation on that. But I do want you to understand that. And the same thing with all my sisters that, that are the moderators and and that, they can they can actually sit back on this one. Because this is a annotated and it's a it's a re clip on what some stuff that I went over. So I do want them to see that and understand what's going on there. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and we're going to crank this up. And and then after that, we're going to have the conversation based on that. And then we'll move on from there. And then we're going to release and we're going to go into zone. So right now, we're going to go ahead and queue it up and we're going to get it started. All right. And it's telling you right up here is the way of sure. Sure is actually talking about the wall. Sure is talking about a wall. So she had hit dead end. She's at a wall. And now you have a messenger coming telling you, go back to this woman and now submit to this woman. That's deep. That's hard to take. And he said, submit yourself into her hand. The messenger went on more, said a little bit more to her. And, it, and the messenger of the Lord, he said, hey, I, will multiply thy seed, that's that seed, it's seed, and it, shall, and, it, and it shall not be numbered for the multitude. I want you to think about that. Not just Ishmael children, but I want you to think about that. Israel children. The Spirit of God, you see right here, the Spirit of God said unto her, the Spirit of God said, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly. It's coming from him. <laughs> if it's coming from him, that's not our prerogative on what he does. That's his prerogative on what he wants to do. He says more. Oh, he got some more. He got some more. He want to drop. So, she was at the wall because it was her own dang fault. She, when she once she got pregnant, now she gonna sit there. She gonna she gonna probably flaunting and doing everything around Sarah. And it was and hating on Sarah. Like, hey, I got this baby. I can do this. I, I got this. I'm walking around. Yeah, you don't have anything. You can't do anything. And Sarah went to Abraham and said, "Son, you can do whatever you want to do with it. <laughs> you can do whatever you want to do." And she got checked. And the angel of the Lord, he came and got her. But he said, he said one thing. You're not going to be able to number him. I'm going to multiply him. Now, that's all he was saying. I'm going to multiply him. He didn't say anything. I'm going to multiply him. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Remember, thou art with child. He 
with this child and shall bear a son. Call this name Ishmael. Boom. We're going to call this one Ishmael. So now we're starting to get everything starting to come into play. Because the Spirit of God had heard thy affliction. So we're going to call this one Ishmael. But I want to tell you a couple of things about this, this child. The Spirit of God is going to tell her a couple of things about this child. Who would have thought he would be a wild man? He's going to be a wild man. Let it drown. Let it drown. He's going to be a wild man. And his power will be against every man. M-A-N. He don't care who it is. <laughs> y'all know y'all like that. You know y'all like that. Y'all yeah, can feel that to the T. I'm just, but you know it's funny, but you know y'all do that. Y'all don't play with nobody. But his power should be against every man and every man's hand against him. Right there, you know, all day. And he should dwell in the presence of all his brethren. <laughs> all hell break loose. And I want you to think about something. See, because Ishmael, he also talking about Ishmaelite. Because you got these boys who who got these ites. Not Jephets, but ites. And I want to show you some some of those to make sure we're clear. I just want to make sure to where we can understand what an ite is. And get that all together. And to find out that, we'll see I well we got ish. We'll deal with that in a minute. But I want you to deal with, I want you to deal with the ites. We're going to deal with the ites. I want you to understand what an ite is. Me, I-T-E at the end of the, at the end of the name. And the reason why it, I-T-E is associated, but it, but it is attached to the noun and the root from the form of the noun, meaning a person associated with or living in a place, one, and it can be connected with a tribe, a leader, a set of beliefs, system. Right there. But that's not the only one I want you to see. I'm going to pull another one. I'm going to pull another one because I want you to make sure you know what an ite is. I want you to make sure you know what an ite is. Because most of us don't know what ite is then. We got to know why there was name, why there was like Israelites and everything else and ites, I-T-E, at the end. Brooklynite, you got people Brooklynite, Ephraimite, Jacobite, Moabite. You see how it, 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 it's tell, showing you made it resident in his following. It's telling you what it is. It's telling you exactly what it is. So as we, we get the understanding of this, we want to know what that means. Because I it's the end of a person name that indicates an individual or a person that is affiliate or either a location, a tribe, or a leader, a doctrine, or a system. Is what it is. And that individual is mainly going to be one of the descendants or the offsprings of the father within the tribe or affiliation. The same you see with the example we're going to show dealing with Israel. And you have the father of Israel, you have Israelites. Israelites. Descending an offspring of Israel. Based on a belief system. In the same thing you see, let's see, let's, let's go here. I want to show you something. Actually, we'll go over that. We'll go over to this last page. And I want to show you in Genesis chapter 25. I want you to see something else. In chapter 25 and picking it up at verse 9. I want you to see this because most people don't even know that this is there. It says, in the sons of Isaac, in 
Gideon and Ishmael. The sons of Isaac, including Ishmael, so Esau and Jacob, including Ishmael, buried him in the cave. Buried who? Abraham. Study in verse 7 and 8. Because it tells you in verse 7, these are the days and years of Abraham's life, which he had lived a hundred and three score and fifteen years. Then Abraham gave up the ghost, and he died in a good old age, an old man, which was full of years, and he was gathered unto his people and his sons, Isaac and Ishmael. You see right there, plain as day. Was Ishmael, did Ishmael help bury him? It was right there in front of you. It was right there in front of you. In the cave is Machpelah, because it's telling you right where it was. It's telling you right there. It says the cave of Machpelah, right there. In the field of Ephron, the son of Zohar, the Hittite. But Machpelah is talking about double. So Machpelah is double. And I'm going to share with some of them what they are. But the problem, what we got to remember is still with, with, with um, what's going on. And showing you how they knew each other. So it wasn't some far off stressed out thing. In Genesis chapter 28, we'll pick it up at verse 9. There's even, even um, oh boy, oh brother sitting there, Esau. Esau went unto Ishmael. You see this here. And Esau took wives which he had, which, which he had. You see this right here. Mahalith, right there. And he had another one. And that's in the daughters of Ishmael, Abraham's son. The sister of who? Neighbor Jah. The place of, well, actually it's talking about the place of fruitfulness, but that's beside the point. To be his wife. So this is not something that's crazy. And you'll see this again. You're going to see they always was in the mix. We just didn't pay attention to it. And in Genesis chapter 37, we're going to pick it up in verse 23. We're going to see it again. When, when, when some of our, our brothers, our fathers, our uncles got crazy. It says, it came to pass when Joseph was coming to his brother and they, they stripped him of, of his coat and his coat of many colors and that was with him. They went to hook him up. And we're going to see that. It says, and they took him and cast him into the pit in a pit and when the pit was empty there was no water in it. And they sat down and ate bread and they lifted up their eyes and they looked and behold a company of Ishmaelites. The company just so happened to be of Ishmaelites. It was highly interesting. Highly interesting. But you'll see, and they and they like hanging out with Midianites. That's who they like to hang out with. From Abraham's other children. They said they came from um, from Gilead in camp in uh, in camels bearing spice spicery and balm and myrrh and going and carrying and going down into Egypt. And Judah said to one of his brethren, what profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? But you're telling me right up here, right up front. So they, so they went on more. They sit there and said this. They said, come, let us sell him to the who? To the Ishmaelites. And let it and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother, or our flesh, our brother will contend. And you will just showing you they this 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 who they were running with. This is who the, the, the Ishmaelites like to run with, the Midianites, who actually uh, Moses married married one of them. And then it says then they then uh they they passed by Midianites, merchantmen. And they had drew him, lifted him up, and Joseph out of the pit, and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites. I told you, Midianites, Ishmael, they, they was running together. They ran together. And 20 pieces of silver, and they bought Joseph into Egypt. So they was all rolling together. All rolling together. 
you see this actually again here. I'm going to show you again here where you're going to see. These all kind of ran together. I'm going to show you another one in um, Judges. But look at Judges chapter 8. And verse 22. So we're going to join you this to where we can get to a point. I want you to understand the point on what we're going to hear. <coughs> and you'll see the same thing. <coughs> He's dealing with Midian, which these are Midianites, but that's beside the point. It says, Then the men of Israel said unto Gideon, Rule over us, both thou and thy sons, and thy sons' sons also, for thou hast delivered us from the hand of Midian. Okay. Watch what Gideon going to tell him. Watch what he's going to tell him. And Gideon said unto him, I will not rule over you, neither shall my sons rule over you. For the Spirit of God shall rule over you. Because he's making sure this is clear. But we can see we have some issues. We can see some issues was there. The issues was always there. And we got to remember what the messenger said to Ishmael. What he said about Ishmael. It tells us here. The angel said. So this is from the, the teaching that I did this past weekend. And we we gonna finish some of this up. And as I said, we have a important meeting. We're gonna go in the back. We're gonna answer some questions, but we mainly want to make sure that the people who come in the back is people who normally come in the Zoom meetings for a point of announce announcement, which I'm gonna be made. And we're gonna go, you know, over some information. So. So with that, you know, you look down in the description, you'll see it there for the Zoom meeting. And again, I'm asking each and every person who has not ever been in the Zoom meetings, I'm asking you to, to today, not to just attend this one, but, but the ones who normally attend the Zoom meetings to come in the back for an important meeting that we're going to have today. So what we're going to do, we're going to end it here. And as I said, um, Elder Fields will be picking it back up uh, this uh, next Wednesday to where he's going to be back on the regular um, schedule. He had to take care of some business. But until then, we're going to go into the back area, answer any questions, and then we'll also do the other piece. So with that, I say to each and every person, <coughs> Until next time, and, and actually before we even go, I do want to make sure people understand what's going on here. I forgot about that, but let me make one quick announcement here. And if you don't know what's going on here, this this teaching will be going on this, this Sabbath. And it's, they're just getting started. Blood batteries. And I want to make sure everybody understand what that is actually talking about. I want to make sure that you clearly get what's going on here. Because this is an important teaching that's going to go forward. And as we normally do, we, we go through and we get an understanding on what's happening. But make sure on this one here, make sure you have all your required necessary tools, your pencil and your paper. Because this is... Something we're going to go into scripture, or we're going to show you some things in scripture. I can almost guarantee you 99% of it, you've probably never seen it in scripture. So we want to show you that. We want to get the understanding of what's going on with these blood batteries. So with that, I'm going to sit there in uh, one second. We want to switch over. <coughs> Excuse me. We want to switch this over and put it back. And, and then we're going to switch over. And so... I say until this weekend, I say to each and every person, until then, I say Shalom.